Welcome to As I Live and Grieve, a podcast that tells the truth about how hard this is. We're glad you joined us today. We know how hard it is to lose someone you love and how well-intentioned friends and family try so hard to comfort us. We created this podcast to provide you with comfort, knowledge, and support. We are grief advocates, not professionals, not licensed therapists. We are you. Today we are speaking with Brian Smith. Brian's life journey has given him a unique perspective on human experience with an appreciation for both the joys and the sorrows he's encountered along the way. He grew up in a Pentecostal religious tradition and later became part of an evangelical community. After that, he became a Christian universalist and later went on to study Buddhism and various mystical traditions. As a young man, he was deeply scarred by toxic religion, which, among other things, instilled in him an intense fear of death a fear that his lifelong spiritual quest has now relieved. With his wife of 30 years, he raised two beautiful, competent, compassionate, and independent daughters. In June of 2015, one of them, his youngest daughter, Shayna, suddenly and unexpectedly passed from this life into the next life at age 15 and a half. With Shayna's passing, he experienced the most profound loss anyone can suffer. After Shana's transition, his spiritual quest intensified, prompted by the extraordinary visions and messages he received from her after her death. As a result of those experiences, he immersed himself in researching concepts of the afterlife, taking a scientific as well as a spiritual and philosophical approach to it. He needed to know, not just believe. It's this experience that he now shares with his audiences and the readers of his book, Grief to Growth, Planted, not buried. Hi, Brian, and thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure, certainly. One of our recent guests, Terry Daniel, I'm sure you know very well, Mm -hmm. recommended you as a guest. And I have to say, I was delighted when you accepted her invitation. Both Stephanie and I. We're very moved by your blog posts, but before we go too far, would you please share with our listeners a little bit of your background, please? Uh, Sure. My background, well, I guess what got me into this whole field was my 15-year-old daughter passed away in 2015. She was 15 and a half. She was a a young, healthy girl, uh, relatively speaking. She had a couple of issues that we knew about, but she just passed away in her sleep one night. So uh, it was June 24th, 2015. So That's what kind of kicked me off on a, you know, overdrive journey to find out about death, the afterlife stuff of that nature. Uh, But ironically, I'd had a fear of death for decades before that. So I had done a lot of studying about death and in fact, had uh, read books about it and done a lot of, you know, uh, in-depth studies. So when when Shana did pass away, uh, one thing is I always knew that that she would be okay. Mm -hmm. I, of course, missed her and still do miss her. But that was one thing I didn't have to go through in my grief was I, I knew that, that she would be okay. Right. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, a, a little bit of a parallel in our life. Probably 20 years ago, yeah, about 20 years ago, I would not even want to be in the same room when death was being discussed. And my mother, who was the ultimate planner, had t- taken steps to have her entire funeral and everything planned out, paid for. And many times she wanted to discuss it with me. Hmm. Uh, It's just my brother and I, and my brother was out of state. So most of it was going to fall to me. And I would literally find an excuse to leave. I could not discuss it. So when you mentioned that you were afraid of death, mine was probably a fear of death as well. I couldn't even talk about it. Things have a way of changing your mind and you just have to kind of sometimes go with it. So here we are today, and I'm talking about it far more comfortably and learning so, so much. Brian, we taught, we, well, I looked at your website when my mom forwarded it to me, mm-hmm. and a lot of your blog posts really spoke to me. And that's where we kind of came up with the um, topic for this, which is signs and sensations from our loved ones. Mm-hmm. For me, and it, this, this was for my grandmother as well, she always thought that her husband, it, when a cardinal was around, that that was him visiting and checking on her. So I have always thought that. I always have cardinals. And actually, we just did a recording of another episode an hour ago. And as we're recording, a female cardinal pops in the little window box um, <laughs> in my thing. And I was just, it just catches me. 
Mm -hmm. So the Cardinal for me is the spirit of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always feel like she's bringing me a message just kind of lets me know that she, she sees me, she's checking on me. It's okay. She's okay. Can you give us some examples of other people that have felt these sensations or signs? And I know you do a lot from your daughter. Yeah. The thing about signs is they can be extremely varied. And so the common ones we know are like people say finding coins. Now, when my daughter passed away, I said, instead of pennies, which are pretty common, I said, our sign is going to be dimes. So I kind of set that intention that I would find dimes. And I found dimes all over the place. Sometimes they'll just be laying around the house. And I can, I can tell you a story a little bit later if you want. I can tell you about a particular time I found a dime. But dimes, we, we live in Ohio, so our state bird is actually the cardinal. Um, so we see quite a few cardinals. But my wife has taken that to be a sign. Mm-hmm. And we've seen cardinals you know, quite a bit. I find feathers a lot of times. I walk every day. So when I'm out walking, I'll find feathers. And when I look, when I find unusual feathers, especially like I found a cardinal feather, which are very rare. I've I've hardly ever seen a cardinal Mm -hmm. feather or feathers from hawks or stuff like that. So those things can be signs. Also signs and synchronicities. I thought those are becoming more and more common for me. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of timing of, of things. So it's the, it's the order of the way things happen. It's the timing that things happen. And if we start to really look out for those, we'll, we'll see those from our loved ones as well. But you know, Dream visits can be a sign. Things around your house, lights turning on and off, the television turning off on and off by itself. We we have a ceiling fan in our bedroom, and that'll come on by itself. It's, it's just start the fan will start spinning, or the lights will come on, or both. In fact, just last week I was sitting there on my bed, middle of the afternoon, the light just came on. Mm-hmm. So you know, there, it can be when when you're looking for signs for your loved one, look for a variety of different things. Don't fixate on on one thing. It could be. Many different ways and different people in spirit can manipulate different things better than others. My daughter was loved with her phone. So she's really good at making things happen on the phones. I've gotten some Mm. amazing signs uh, on my telephone. One time, as a matter of fact, you know, we're doing a podcast. So speaking of podcasts, I went to look at my phone and all my podcast covers on my phone had changed to a picture of Shana. It's a picture of Shana that I had when she was like two years old and she was in our, in our, our dining room. And I'm like, what happened? Because I was on my my podcast app on my phone, and every single picture it changed. Every every cover of every episode had changed a picture of Shana. Wow. And I yeah. thought, so I went back to Buzzsprout, which is my podcast host, and it hadn't yeah. changed there. It hadn't changed anywhere else. It was just on my phone. Just on your phone. Hmm. So things like that are just, I'm, I have no idea how she does stuff like that, but <laughs> make things like that happen. That's yeah. incredible. Can you give us an example of the synchronous signs that you were talking about, about timing? Yeah, I'll give you one that just happened. This was just last week. So I've been having a conversation the week before with someone and we were talking about how spirit comes to you early in the morning. And this person said spirit sometimes comes to you. It usually comes to you about three o'clock in the morning was what they said. I jokingly said, no, it's four o'clock because four o'clock is when I seem to get downloads and things, you know, my, my mind starts racing or whatever. And then separately, I was having a conversation. We were talking about shower stalls and somebody had posted a meme on Facebook about shower stalls. And I, I was telling people how when our builder put our shower stall in, he wanted to leave the door off, but I wanted the door on. So these are two totally unrelated things that happened one week, both very, very minor. Next week, four o'clock in the morning, I'm lying there in bed and I hear this incredibly loud explosion. I wake up. I, I thought it was in my dream, but I started hearing this noise in the bathroom. I get up. I go into the bathroom. Our shower stall had just exploded. Oh my goodness. And it wow. was. 401 when I looked at the clock. And I actually, lie, I was laying in bed for a couple, a minute or so before I actually looked. So the reason I say this is like, okay, so a conversation about four o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. a conversation about a shower stall. Right. And then the following week, my shower stall explodes at four o'clock in the morning. Hmm. So I took this as maybe some sort of a sign. I don't know. So I, I have a lot of friends who are mediums. So I asked, and if my medium friends could pick up on what happened, and this is a long story, but I just say I talked to one of my medium friends and she, my daughter walked her through what had happened and mm-hmm. gave her all the signs that led up to what had happened. Now, I still don't know what the significance of that was, but it was a pretty wild event. Wow. wow. Okay. I think when we experience something like this, we want so much to, to cling to it, to treasure it, to remember it. Mm-hmm. And we so much want it to happen again. So are you saying then if we kind of orient ourselves to be watching for them, are we likely to find an increase in signs just because we're more attuned 
to looking for them? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it's a chicken or egg thing. It's like when you think about a yellow Mazda, you're buying a car, right? Suddenly you go out and you see that car all over the place. I think the signs come to us whether we notice them or not. It's just when we start to tune in, we start to realize that everything is orchestrated. There, there are no, I don't believe there are any accidents. I don't believe there are any coincidences. So the more that I tune into that, the more I see things like, like again, the shower door exploding. I might not have thought about what happened the week before. It could, I could just could have taken that as a random event, but I'm starting to look for these patterns. And when I start to look for them, you see them more often. Sure. Um, I would say to people that a lot of times, and I'm an engineer, so I'm a very analytical person. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, that just happened. You know, the, the receptacle in our kitchen just decided to stop working or my computer just decided to stop working. You know, those things, these things happen. But when you look for that second thing, that second thing that happens along with it, that timing, that's what really makes you know that, that it's a sign. Okay. You know, when you see things that are, that are very rare, you know, those are things that you can take as a sign. So. Yeah, I, I think that it's both. I think as we as we look for them and as our loved ones see that we're getting them, they encourage them to send us, send us more. Okay. Can you offer any insight on how we can interpret a meaning from all of these different experiences? Yeah, you know, and, and meaning is a really interesting thing because I think typically, I, I, I call them Easter eggs. It's kind of like, you know, if, if you play video games, they the programmers will hide little things in the game. Mm-hmm. Just as a little wink to let you know that, you know, it's just kind of cool. I think that our loved ones, our guides, angels, God, whatever, they put little things in our lives to just remind us that this world is not all there is. This is not the ultimate reality. So the significance of science, I don't know, you know, I don't, I haven't gotten too many signs that say, okay, you should do this or you should do that. It's more of a reminder, you know, it's a reminder that they're still with us, that we're never alone. That everything is okay, that everything is, is really, you know, under control, even though it might not appear to be. And so that's the, that's what signs, you know, mean to me. And then again, when you find a coin or you find a feather or something, that's not really going to tell you a lot. But as you start to orient and you start to look for the synchronicities and the patterns in your life, then it actually becomes kind of like breadcrumbs. You know, if someone comes in your life or something comes in your life and you feel like, I feel like this is something I should do. That might be a sign from your loved one or from your guides or whatever. So start to look for those things and start to trust them. So be more open to them, in other words. Yeah. And and just like years ago, I was uncomfortable speaking about death. I was probably equally uncomfortable considering something like signs from departed loved ones Mm -hmm. because I had never experienced anything. Of course, the, the cardinal presence has grown in popularity, I think, worldwide, because so many people now will post pictures of cardinals and mention a a loved one that that was lost years ago. So that's quite common. I actually experienced one, a sensation, not what I would call a sign. I had dozed off in the afternoon once in my chair, and I suddenly woke because I felt like fingers across my cheek. Mm -hmm totally alone there was no one nothing else animal nothing else in the house with me yet i felt the sensation Mm -hmm. i was convinced it was my mother yeah just kind of saying you know you need to rest go ahead and nap because i would never nap yeah but of course i never told anybody about it for a long time because people you know what would they think of me people are getting a little bit more comfortable i think talking about it i know some people They'll just have a, they'll smell a a certain scent that Mm -hmm. reminds them of their loved one, but there's no earthly reason for that scent to be in the air. Mm -hmm. Again, they might not say anything because they don't want to be considered crazy or insane. Is there a way to kind of defend the reality of what you experience or is it just not necessary too bad what others think? Yeah, those are great questions. I mean, the thing is, we all want validation, you know, and, and we want to, we don't want to think I'm going crazy or this is just wishful thinking. Right. So that's a very common thing to desire. Now, I tell people, be careful with your signs and to guard them. You don't want to take your sign and share it with someone who's just going to say that this, it's impossible, that signs don't happen, because they're just going to tell you it was just a coincidence. It's wishful thinking. That didn't really happen. So share your signs with people that, first of all, believe that it at least might be a sign, at least believe in the possibility. 
And, but the other thing is try to get rid of the idea that I have to validate this with someone else. If something happens in your mind and it reminds you of your loved one and you think it's a sign, it's a sign. It's, 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 it's got the intended effect and it made you think of your loved one. So that brush across your face, I believe was your mother because you believe it was your mother. And it's, and I can tell you this because people are starting to share this. It's not that uncommon. This has been happening for thousands of years, but in our culture, we've decided to keep it to ourselves because we don't want people to think we're crazy. Right. After my daughter passed away, my wife and I started sharing signs with people, people we've known for two decades or more, started saying, well, when my grandmother passed away, this happened to me. Or when my father passed away, this happened to me. And I'm like, I've known you for two decades. You've never shared this with me. <laughs> and we keep these things inside because we're scared. We're scared that people think we're crazy. We're scared that maybe we are going crazy. But I'm glad that things are becoming more open and people are doing podcasts like you guys are putting out. So the people can say, yeah, when that happened to me, that really was right. you know, a sign from someone, from, yeah. from one of my loved ones. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's funny because that was years ago that I experienced that, but it's just as vivid a memory today mm-hmm. as it was the afternoon it happened. And that's not really normal for most things I experience. You know, they're just kind of gone. Right. And that one has just remained with me. Which is another great indication that it was a sign. And the thing is about the way our brains operate is things that have an emotional impact on us get really stored in there deeply. And because that had such an impact on you, you carry that with you, you know, you and you probably recall it often, which keeps the memory fresh. Right. And that that's a beautiful thing. And so I would say that when, when someone has something like that happen to them, don't let someone take that away from you. You know, don't let them think, oh, it was just a breeze that blew across your face or you were just dreaming or you were in that stage in between, mm-hmm. you know, no, if, if it, if, and the other thing about that stage where we're in between, by the way, that's when our brains are, are less active and we can reach the other world better and they can reach us. So a lot of times things do happen in those moments when we're falling asleep or when we're waking up, um, that's when they can really reach us. And I, and I, there are people that have actually seen their loved ones standing at the foot of their bed, you know, um, and I truly believe that people have seen that uh, it's happened to more than one person. Brian, are there ways that we can train ourselves to become more receptive, more aware, more available for these experiences? What can we do to remain connected with them? Yeah, that's the, the number one thing is, first of all, believe it's possible. I mean, everything we we tend to have been caught up in this materialistic paradigm that says that this doesn't happen, that once we're gone, we're gone. Or even if you believe, as I believed when I was growing up, that, you know, when we die, we go to heaven. There's, we didn't, I didn't really know about this connection. And one thing about when Shana did pass away um, in 2015, I knew she was okay, but I didn't realize that there was still a, a really strong connection between people on the other side and people on this side. They're still really involved in our lives. So the first thing is to believe that, to believe that they still care about you. They're still themselves. They're still following your life. And I've, and I've got so many examples of when Shana has dropped in on, on people that I know and said, send this message to my father. And I've gotten messages from her, um, wow. that says, you know, I know what my, what my wife had for, for lunch the day before I had a meeting. I was doing a reading once and she said, your, your wife had like a piece of this rainbow cake or something the day before. And I, I didn't even know. I, when my wife got home, I said, did you have this cake? And she said, yeah, I did. So my daughter is still, you know, in touch with our lives. So that's the first thing is to believe it. And the other thing is to, you know, set an intention, ask your loved one for signs, ask them, you know, send me something. If you can be specific, fine, but don't be, don't be wed to the fact that it has to be the way you said it. I, I wanted, you know, some people want a dream visit. Some people don't get dream visits. Some people say, well, I, I found a quarter, but I didn't find a penny. So therefore it wasn't a sign. But my daughter, I asked her for dimes. And so I was, I, I said, I'd tell you the story later on. This was right after she had passed away. It was about three months after she had passed. My, my other daughter, my wife and I were on vacation trying to adjust to our new normal. And I was having a rough day. I, I was saying I walk every morning. So I went for a long walk that morning. And I'm like, I got to have some sign for you to get through the day, Shana. So I said, our thing is a dime. So, you know, show me a dime. I didn't know whether it was going to happen or not. But, you know, I asked. I made the, I set the intention. So later that morning, my, my wife, my other daughter got up. We're getting into the van to take us to the ferry to go across to the island. And they get in the front seat. And I bend down to get in the back seat. Even though there was room in the front, I decided to sit in the back by myself. And I bent my head down to get in the van. I looked under the seat and there was a single dime sitting on the floor under that seat. 
So that's again where I talk about the timing. And the thing yeah. is, like, it was it was a dime. It wasn't a quarter. It was only a dime. It was just sitting right there by itself. Mm-hmm. So I took that as a sign. I'm like, I asked for that sign. I dad said I need the sign. So I that that really helped me get through that day. So yeah, ask your loved one for signs, and then when you do get the sign, you know, express gratitude. Tell them I got this. I received it. You know, thank you, because that encourages them to to keep sending the signs to you. And it, it's kind of a feedback loop. Once you start, once you start getting these things, then they'll come more often. Now it was funny. I was talking about the shower exploding. You know, last week. I was just thinking a few days before I hadn't, I hadn't found any feathers in a long time. I haven't found any coins in a long time because then the signs can change over the time. And I think sometimes they're like, okay, we're, we're past the feathers and the coins and stuff. But we're going to move on to bigger things. So look for your loved ones to start speaking to you. Now it'll be in your own voice. It'll be in your head and it sounds like okay. your own thoughts, but be open to that and have conversations with them. You know, there, there are things you can do like that, that, to really try to open that connection. And once you do, this has been my experience, the other signs might fade away a little bit because now it's like, we don't need the coins and the feathers anymore. Now we're communicating. Mm -hmm. At the risk of sounding really silly and wanting to find signs where maybe there are none. My husband died just about three years ago, just a few days over the three years. And as I was cleaning out and continue Mm -hmm. to clean out his office, when I got to the floor, it, he died of a brain tumor. So his mental faculties were not the best in his waning months before he went into a, a nursing home. But when I got down to the floor level in my office, you might find tons and tons of paper clips. But in his office, I found an abundance of bullets. <laughs> he was a, a gun owner. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I cleaned up the bullets and thought to myself, oh my goodness, I'm so glad our place never caught on fire because it probably would have killed a number of the first responders and and I cleaned them all up and everything. And then I swear several days later, I went back to do a little more cleaning and there were more bullets. And to this day, three years later, I will Mm -hmm. still find an occasional bullet. And now it makes me wonder if I didn't see it as a sign, but maybe Tom has just been saying to me, hello, I'm here. Do you get it? Do you not get it? (laughs) You know, (laughs) something like that. And, you know, am I ridiculous to think that way? No, no, you're not ridiculous at all. It's certainly possible. And again, if you, even if you express that intention, even if you didn't speak it out loud, that maybe this is a sign, it may be an encouragement for him to start sending you more physical apports, things appearing are certainly possible. I know, I know people who are physical mediums that have had coins just drop out of the air. I I was interviewing a guy and a feather fell from the, like from nowhere, just behind him as as I was talking to him. Um, so yeah, these, these things are definitely possible. Um, one day, I, I, my wife, her office is on the lower floor. So I would walk down and I'd seen her, you know, and I came back upstairs and I walked, went to walk down again. There was a dime sitting on the basement stairs. I'm like, I know that dime was not there yeah. when I walked by a few minutes ago. So yeah, this, those things are definitely possible and something, something that's yeah. that personal between you and him that's, that's a bullet. Well, yes, you know, I was, you might continue he was to the find gun it. owner, but I was not in favor of him having guns in the house. So it was, that was always kind mm-hmm. of a, a contention of ours. If someone wanted to learn more, you mentioned you did research on a lot of things. If I wanted to learn and better understand this whole concept of signs, can you think of any books that might be a good place for me to start, for example? There's a woman, I'm pretty sure her name is Christine Duminiak, D-U-M-I-N-I-A-K. And I don't know the name of the book. Yeah, she's written a book about signs. Okay. Yeah, she's actually written several several books. So that's one person I know who's kind of a, an expert in signs. Thing is, I will say that as I said, they come in all yeah, forms. Yeah. So don't limit yourself. You know, just if, if something happens and reminds you of your loved one, it could be. I, I see yeah. uh, Stephanie. I see your dog in the background. A lot of times, a dog will like start staring into space and start mm-hmm. tracking, like there's someone walking across the room. Um, and I've heard, again, I've talked to people who are medium. I have a lot of friends who are mediums. So we can't see spirit. Most of us can't, but some of them who can will say, yeah, that dog, there's another dog that your, your former dog that used to live here is still yeah. walking around. They spend time in that corner or whatever. So those things can, can be signs. So really almost anything, you know, and, and again, I don't, and I, I'm, I am an engineer. I am, I am a skeptic. Mm-hmm. So I don't take everything as a sign. It's like, oh, there's a, 
there's a robin outside my window. That right. must be my grandmother. It's like, you know, robins are pretty common where I live in, you know, in Ohio. But if I see an animal doing strange behavior, my, my daughter, not too long after Shana passed, my other daughter was on our deck and she called me. I was in my office working. I'm like, what's going on? She said, this butterfly has been flying around me for like half an hour. So I sat here and I watched this butterfly just flying back and forth, landing on the railing next to her. She walked over. She actually touched it. It just sat there. I came back in my office. I continued to work. She calls me like 15, 20 wow. minutes later. She says, this butterfly is still circling me. Yeah. And that was yeah. a pretty, you know, weird occurrence. And she said, you know, is it Shana? Now, I don't, I don't believe our loved ones take the shape, the form of butterflies or even cardinals, but they can send the, the animals to us and, and cause them to behave in right. ways that draw our so, attention. Yeah. Anything really that prompts a memory of that person could be a sign. Yeah. Yeah, and I give you another example. This 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 is doesn't seem like a sign, but it was it was again, it's it's two things to me. It's always the timing or or something that validates it. So my computer started acting really strange. Like the hard drive was like crashing. So I called the guy that works on my computer and I, I told him what was going on. He said, Sounds like you're gonna need a new computer because it's just not gonna come back. And it was about three or four days. It was it was off and on. I was just about to get a new computer and it just started suddenly working again. And I'm like, that's weird. Like a week later, I was talking to a medium friend of mine. And he said, Shana said to tell you that she messes with your computer. And I said, <laughs> tell Shana to stop breaking things. Because my daughter tends to break things in the house. We had a, a electrical receptacle that just stopped working. And it, it, our house okay. is 20 years old. So that's normal. It's a GFI. They wear out. So I was just getting ready to go buy one to replace it. I, I'd been trying to reset it for days. It just wouldn't reset. It kept tripping. And I said, I'm going to try one last time. And I hit it. And it stayed on and that's been a couple of years ago and it's working now but i told shana yeah. stop <laughs> oh doing goodness. that kind of stuff so um yeah it's, uh, it's I, I it could be this. anything yeah sadly i think our time is growing short for today but before we wrap up i would like you to tell our audience a little bit more about yourself things you might be working on your podcast what they might find if they visit your website anything at all you'd like to share with our listeners Sure. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. My website is grief to growth. It's grief, the number two growth.com. Uh, I've written a book that's also the same title, grief to growth. I call it plant it, not buried. I'm a life coach. I am a grief guide. I work with people that are in grief. Really, I help people try to reset their framework, how they look at their life, how they look at the events that have happened to them. Uh, my daughter just said passed away in, in 2015. I thought it was the end of my life. I did. I literally did not want to be here, but it launched a whole new thing for me. It's a, it's a whole different thing that I'm doing now. So if you visit my website or read my book, it, it kind of helps people to kind of reset. And I work with people that are going through grief to say, how can we take this terrible, terrible thing that's happened and turn it into something that's beneficial to myself and to the world? You've created quite a legacy for your daughter, mm -hmm. Shana. And when we post our podcast, of course, we'll let you know when it's being released. But you will see a line on there because I will dedicate it to Shana's memory as well, just so she's in everybody's mind as well. I'd like our listeners to know that we will make sure to include Brian's contact information on our website, as well as in the episode notes on the podcast apps. We will link to his website as well. Brian, thanks so much today for your guidance and insight. I am now more and more curious about this entire topic than I have ever been before. To all of our listeners, we'll chat again next week. Stay well, take care of yourselves as we all continue to live in grief. Thank you so much for listening with us today. Do you have a topic that you'd like us to cover or do you have a question from one of our episodes? Please email us at info at asiliveingrieve.com and let us know. We hope you will find a moment to leave a review, send an email, and share with others. Join us next time as we continue to live and grieve together.